G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, what a dump and it seems that there's been a bit of a recovery at the moment. But I don't want people to get too excited yet. I think there could be, still be some more pain. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. And I'll go over to the charts very shortly and we can have a look at that and I'll tell you why. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to happen. Again, it's just something we always need to keep in the back of our minds. What if this happens? What if this happens? If we are planning, then we're one step ahead. Because there's, there's that old saying, someone who fails to plan, plans to fail. Got to have a plan in place. What happens if this happens? What do you do? Do you have some money on the side to buy the dip? What happens if it goes lower again? You know, Do you have some more money to buy the dip? What happens if it goes so low that you really need to get out because that's just beyond your threshold? Are you ready to sell? Can you sell? Can you get out without losing too much money? Or did you get in at such a good time that short of it going to zero, <laughs> you're always going to be in money? I don't know what your circumstances are. You need to work all that out for yourself, but you definitely need to have a plan. That way you can, you know, you're just ready to go no matter what happens, basically. But again, we'll get onto the charts in a minute. Let's have a look. All right, BTC dominance is dropping. Look, if Bitcoin doesn't, you know, take another big dump, but it just kind of slowly tracks down a little bit, maybe going from here down to 32,000, 31,000, slowly over a week or so, we could have a crazy, crazy uh, altcoin run. It could be the alt season. We need Bitcoin to flatten off somewhere uh, for the altcoins to really go crazy. Is this it? Or is Bitcoin going to, you know, again, take another fairly steep uh, tumble, which will take altcoins down with it? We'll have to wait and see. But if Bitcoin kind of, you know, ranges from 35,000, you know, maybe even down to 30,000 over the next week without just, you know, violently kind of jumping up and down and flying all over the place, good chance alts will do well. Because look, these alts have recovered pretty quickly already. I mean, look at these percentage gains. So ETH dominance, again, continues to rise. I mean, this was up around sort of, oh God, well, I think it got to nearly $1,400. It dropped down to 900 and something dollars, and now it's already back to basically eleven hundred dollars so it dropped harder but it rebounded harder i really think ethereum is going to be a great play uh during this run and don't get me wrong i think there's going to be lots of other great plays during this run as well but bitcoin for me not financial advice just my personal opinion it's the safest bet if you don't understand cryptocurrencies you haven't been around for long just invest in bitcoin in my personal opinion, and again, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. In the long run, Bitcoin's your safest bet. It'll still perform great. You just have to be ready to hold for the long term. If you want to get in and you know quickly double your money and get out, you might be able to do that. You might, but you'll probably get wrecked, in all fairness. That's what will probably happen. You'll get in now thinking this was the dip, uh, and it's just going up from here, and then all of a sudden you wake up tomorrow. Uh, and as a 20,000 or maybe even 14,000. Uh, and then you will just be completely and utterly wrecked and you'll probably sell whatever you've got left and not understand that, you know, based on previous history, by holding for the long term, you you know, if again, history repeats itself, you're likely to do extremely well. But if you're trying to jump in and out of the markets and flip-flop all over the place, you're just going to get wrecked. All right, continuing on. So again... BTC dominance dropping, ETH dominance rising, uh, and gas prices, not too bad. We still want them to come down into the single digits. It's double digit stuff. It's just too much. It's really you know, hurting us. Now, look, good thing is the market cap has risen again. So maybe things are going to go back up. But this could be a bit of a fake out, a dead cat bounce. We need to be careful uh, and just wait and see. Now, I bought this dip. Uh, when Bitcoin got to around about sort of 40,000-ish, maybe a little bit lower, 39, a little bit over, 41,000, somewhere around about there, I did take some profits. Now, not a lot, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I, I believe that cash is trash uh, and it's not a great store of value, but you still need to have some, so I took some because I knew that at some stage there'd have to be some kind of correction and I wanted to take advantage of that. If you don't have any cash, you can't take advantage of the, of the dump simple as that and whether you call it cash you know we're not talking about cash that you hold but basically dollars is a better way whether that's in tether usd or your national currency whatever it is if you don't have any of that sitting on the side 
you can't take advantage of, of the dips, plain and simple. So, you know, look, I, I got, I don't want to say I got lucky, actually. No, I didn't get lucky. I made a smart play. I made a decision, and if it didn't pay off, then it wouldn't have mattered. I would have had cash on the side for the inevitable dip. It was always going to come at some stage. I just didn't know exactly where it was, but I thought, geez, if it's not at 40,000, you know, it's probably going to be at 50,000 or, you know, maybe up to sort of 75, 80,000. But either way, I figured I wasn't too far off. So I took some profit. It dipped, it got all the way down to 31,000. I was at work, as I said, thought I was going to miss it, got home, uh, and I was lucky I got to buy some Bitcoin at $33,000. So it's already gone up since there. Now I deployed about half the cash that I had sitting on the side. I've got the other half that's sitting there. Now, if it dips further, I'm going to put half of that cash into Bitcoin. And again, probably not till it gets to, and not that I think it will, but if it does, it's got to get to about 27000 before I'm going to put the next uh, half of my bit, uh, cash into Bitcoin. And then if it dips down again and goes down to, you know, say uh, 20000 I'll put half the cash in again. And every time it goes down, I'll keep putting half the cash in until, you know, basically it corrects. And at some stage, it, you know, in my opinion, it will correct. So that's how I do it. You don't want to dump all the money in because it might go a whole lot lower. So, you know, have a rough price. And I thought, yeah, 30000 is a pretty good retracement from sort of 42000 That's $12,000 off um, the top. That's not bad. And again, a 20-something percent retracement. Put half my money in. So now I've still got cash sitting on the side. Look, if Bitcoin races up and goes even higher from here, then I've still got cash on the side for the next time there's a retracement. I don't have to dump it all in and time it exactly and be exactly right. I just got to be thereabouts and I'll make good profits. And that's the same for everyone else. Now you need to work out your own sort of uh, method. Uh, you know, don't just take my word that the way I do it's the best way because it's not. I can guarantee you there's other you know people out there that are way outperforming me. But I've got my system. And again, you know, particularly I just saw it. You know, 50,000 to maybe sort of 80,000, I thought there would have to be some kind of decent correction around about there. I just I thought there was no way it could push to 100,000 before we had a decent correction. It didn't happen at sort of 40,000. And I thought, right here, if we're going to get one, uh, it, you know, before we sort of go up to that sort of 70, 80,000 dollar correction, uh, 70, 80,000 dollar price range before a correction, it's going to happen somewhere here between sort of 40 and 50. And so I just made an educated sort of guess, really. Took a bit of a gamble, you could say. But again, I don't like to call it a gamble. It was an educated guess. And look, I was lucky I got right. But like I said, I didn't dump all my money in just when I got home. And I was like, oh, 33000 that's still dirt cheap. Because if I dump all my money in and then it goes lower, I've got nothing left to buy anything when it gets lower. I just thought, you know, 33000 great price to get in but I don't want to throw all my money at it in case it goes lower. So that's what I've done. If you like that method, uh, keep that in mind uh, and you can deploy that kind of thing. You know, A good price is put half in. If it goes lower, you can put in another half. If it goes lower, put in another half and so on and so on. And if you only get half your money in uh, and it just goes up from there, you've still done all right. You still bought the dip and you got cash on the side for the next time it happens. And it will happen at some stage. But we need to remember, buying the dip is what you do in a bull market. Once it turns to a bear market, it's time to start taking some profits. That's one of the hardest things to do. I didn't do it in the last one and I got crushed and I won't go through the whole story again. I've told it a number of times. This time I'm going to make smarter decisions. Well, at least I hope, I, I hope I'm going to. We'll have to wait and see and I'll keep you updated. All right, movers. What was the biggest mover in the last 24 hours? Boom, Nano just keeps going. That is on an absolute rip tear. Anyone who's in Nano at the moment must be, you know, so happy and good on them too. Like, you know, I'm dirty jealous that I wasn't in Nano. The way it's performed over the last year, I think it's up 1,600% or something crazy like that. But well done. Blockstack, uh, I'm really happy with uh, how Blockstack's going. I was sort of lucky. I got in. Uh, I think I sort of tripled my money. Uh, I took my initial investment back and I put it into Bitcoin and now I'm just letting the rest ride. But look, I am thinking about putting more into it. The way it's been performing, I think it's going to do extremely well over uh, this run. And look, there's a number of other coins that I think are going to do well and I've spoke about them. Uh, Synthetics, Aave, 
Uh, I think Stellar's probably going to do all right. They seem to be doing uh, pretty well. I think Ethereum is going to do extremely well. But again, some of these lower cap plays, if they do well, like Blockstack at 59 and you know Synthetics at 18 and all the rest of it, they're going to weigh out if they do well. And again, something could happen that changes you know the dynamic for them. But they're going to pump silly crazy. Well, they'll do way better than Ethereum and they'll do way better than uh, Bitcoin and all the rest of it. But they are a much, much riskier, uh, a much riskier play. You know, again, personal opinion only, not financial advice. I think you should have around about sort of, you know, maybe 40% of your uh, holdings in Bitcoin, maybe around another 40% in Ethereum, and then that other 20% that you got left over, you decide what altcoins you want to go in. I truly believe in Ethereum. I think it's here for the long haul, but I could be wrong. We haven't got the full rollout of ETH 2.0. Something could be wrong. We never know. Uh, I think Bitcoin, you know, it's it's here to stay. I just I would find it hard to believe after, you know, 12 years that it's suddenly going to, you know, there's going to be a bug in it that someone hasn't been able to find before. But all that's my personal opinion. Now, all right, we're having a look. So there's some great, great winners here. I mean, again, look at these pumps in 24 hours the bounce back and again they all had dips you can see the dips here every just about everything dipped it didn't matter what it was but again so alt season still kind of could be in play particularly if bitcoin now just starts to range you know 35,000 down to 30,000 uh, over the next week or so we could see some ridiculous moves time will tell all right what about losers yeah, there's been some losers, so Nexo. Uh, but look, single digit losers, and really this is just the uh, the kind of stable coins really that mainly have lost. So Nexo, 3%, that hurts a bit. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, uh, again, that hurts a little bit, but you know, still up 4%, nearly 5%, let's say, over seven days. Uh, I'm not into Bitcoin Cash. Uh, and I think that's another fork of Bitcoin Cash, isn't it? Bitcoin Cash ABC, something like that, it's, yeah crazy i just i can't get into it there's been too many forks all right so what i want you to have a look at though is here we've got the bitcoin chart now this is the 50 day moving average the 100 day moving average and the 200 day moving average this correction may not be over and it could get a whole lot worse normally we bounce off the 50 day average quite regularly we're nowhere near it look where the price of the 50 day average is it is down at $24,000. Now, I think the buy pressure is way too much. There was a lot of uh, whales that got in around 24000 so I just don't think we're going to go back here anytime soon. But what happens if it did crack it? 100-day moving average. We're now going down to $19,000. Could happen. 100% could happen. But I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I am prepared if it does. Like I said, I'm just going to keep scaling into Bitcoin every time it gets to a certain price level that I, if it goes lower, that I think, yep, I need to get in. I'm going to put half my cash and half my cash and half my cash. And that's the way I'm going to do it. Now, here's the scary thing. And someone did put it on Twitter. Quite regularly during a bull run, Bitcoin will come back and bounce off the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average at the moment is that basically $14,900 thereabouts. Yeah, a little bit above. Let's go just there. Let's just round it off. $15,000. It would hurt people a whole bunch right now if Bitcoin were to fall back down there. I don't think it will. I think there's too much uh, buying interest. But look, a pullback to sort of somewhere down here uh, could be on the table. Again, I think there'd be too many companies buying in uh for that to happen and look they have sort of bought in we can see we got all the way down to here so it dipped down to 30,000 and it's just snapped back straight up and again Monday you know brand new day like I said best time to buy Bitcoin generally if your trader is Monday or after the weekend dip which generally occurs and the best time to sell it is generally about sort of Wednesday uh, and again there'll be some kind of retracement over the weekend and you can you know uh, buy in and sell out and buy in and sell out and make a profit it's not a golden rule though, so please, again, I don't trade. It's just a trend that's been happening for a long time uh, and particularly in the uh, bull markets. Again, in a bear market, it's just going down. You need to have taken some profits uh, or completely got out if you're just here to flip some money and all the rest of it. But I don't advocate any of that. I'm just giving you some information. 
what you do with it uh, is your choice so again this dip could get a whole lot worse we're not out of the woods yet but what we need to see is look this is a newbie Jim Cramer he just got into Bitcoin not long ago uh, big uh, CNBC guy and for a long time he didn't want to get into Bitcoin and now he did now he has but since there's been this big crash he says he won't buy Bitcoin uh, above twenty thousand dollars following this 20% crash not a problem Jim I'm cool with that I'm buying it and I will continue to buy the dip dollar cost average I wouldn't want to be putting tons of money in uh, right now because it could go a whole lot lower but again we need to have a look at the charts you know we go back here let's zoom way out look what Bitcoin has done over history sorry I have to bring this down so he's saying he doesn't want to buy it over twenty thousand dollars all right because that was the old all-time high imagine what someone who uh, who had have said the same thing about Bitcoin back here at one thousand dollars I'll never buy it over a thousand dollars because you know it'll go down and then some poor bugger buys it at a little bit over a thousand dollars thirteen hundred and then it dips down to nine hundred as long as they didn't panic sell and had gone back and read the charts they would have gone from 900 to nearly 20,000 imagine and again if someone had said that back here same thing I'll never buy Bitcoin over $300 because that was the old all-time high and then they would have missed out going from 300 to basically 1200 yes it could correct yes things could be uh, drastic for quite a while but if you've done your research and again history repeats itself there's no guarantees but again uh, I, I showed this tw tweet the other day something can do something only once in a lifetime it can just be this one-off fluke and it never happens again but if something does it twice it's almost guaranteed it's going to happen a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time and a six time and a seven time it's a trend it's something that just repeats itself now again not if it only does it in a week uh, that we need a little bit more time Bitcoin has been doing these big moves throughout its whole life and yes it has big corrections but then it just has another good pump so Jim Cramer he's one of the newbies and again he's saying he'll never buy it over twenty thousand dollars once upon a time this was the twenty thousand dollar mark where we are now I'm not saying it's the best time to buy right now not in the short term we can't guarantee but long term five ten years whew, who knows what the price is gonna go to make your own mind up all right and here's another reason why I'm not bearish uh, at all could it still dump a lot absolutely so we need to sorry we need to oh, bring this down and there we go all right so here's one of the reasons why I'm still not bearish and I don't think there's really much chance we come back down here PayPal hosts 242 million dollars in crypto trading over a 24-hour period this was yesterday the 11th of January 242 million dollars of crypto trading in one day PayPal currently only uh, do crypto for their American users they're a massive global payments uh, network but they only do cryptocurrencies for the USA at the moment no one else um, they weren't originally going to start the American one until this year January this year and then go worldwide later in the year uh, I, I'm not even sure where they're at with the worldwide but I know they haven't started it yet but they just couldn't wait so they got on board and America alone I'm pretty sure I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure I'm right they're doing 242 million dollars uh, worth of crypto trading in 24 hours yesterday when there was a big dip what do you think is going to happen in the future now according to crypto market uh, data aggregator nomics yesterday's trading dwarfed PayPal's uh, previous record of 129 million which was recorded on January 6 since January 1st daily volume has increased by 950 percent 
what way do you think it could go? And I, uh, there was a really good one uh, tweet from uh, Alex Saunders from Nuggets News, and I retweeted it. I completely agree. Things are only going to go up from here. That doesn't mean we can't have correct. So I'll correct myself. They won't only go up, but you know, sort of longer term. What other way can they go? Can they have pullbacks and corrections? Of course they can. Absolutely. But if this is America alone and we haven't even got to the rest of the world yet, I, I shudder to think what they're going to do. And PayPal uh, is buying up, I think PayPal and Square Cash App are buying up all the newly uh, mined Bitcoin at the moment. And Grayscale was, I don't know if they are, we'd have to wait for the latest tweet, they were buying up more than the daily uh, mined Bitcoin. So Grayscale was buying up more. I think it was like 13, uh, 1.3% uh, more than all the daily buy, uh, mined Bitcoin. And Cash App and PayPal were buying up all that amount. So that means there's an over uh, supply of uh, buyers and an under amount of sellers. Now, again, at some stage that will all slow down, but I think we're just at the very early stages and this is going to get wild but wild corrections will come as well. So that's why though, I don't think we're gonna really dip down to here. It doesn't mean we can't, we could, but I think the chance of us making it back down to 24,000 are slim at the moment. Uh, and the chances of us going down to the 100 and 200 day moving average, uh, they are, yeah, it'd, I just don't know who would sell enough Bitcoin uh, to push it down that low. It would take some massive whale uh, to push that price down and that means they think that it's not going to go much higher and they're going to be able to buy in at less than fifteen thousand dollars again uh, someday highly unlikely i just i don't see it happening again not impossible i just i could i don't know who would do it i don't know who's got enough bitcoin and would be happy to sell now to get us down there this is a maybe yep look maybe some you know massive whale uh, wants to sell off half now at these prices and thinks, yep, uh, Bitcoin's going to go below $19,000 uh, at the next cycle low. Fair enough. This is more likely. Yep, maybe uh, some Bitcoin whale uh, sells enough. And again, not all is crypto, but pushes it down enough to get down to here because he believes at the next cycle low, Bitcoin will go below $24,000 so he can buy back in cheaper. That's possible. But look, I don't know what the cycle high is going to be. I, th I think about it regularly like everyone else does and I read all the tweets and all the information and there's people saying it, you know, businesses, banks saying this is going to $400,000 by 2022 to 2025 and some people saying a million dollars. Well, if it's going to those prices in the next sort of, you know, two to three to five years, I don't think we'll ever see Bitcoin down this low. Not in the longer term. In the shorter term, possible, absolutely possible, but I just don't think it's going to happen now. Again, personal opinion, not financial advice. Right, institutional buyers. Uh, so they were buying the dip and they were not too phased by this at all. So Nick Carter, chronic Bitcoin bull and founder of Castle Island Ventures, disclosed after the crash that neither money nor the prospect of losing it bought him happiness. He tweeted, excuse me, that he felt nothing at 40k and I continue to feel nothing. Maybe I'll feel something at 100k. I agree. 40k Bitcoin are so early in a bull cycle. It's great, don't get me wrong, but I'm not like super excited and ready to, you know, start like, you know, cashing out around the 100k mark depending on where we are during the year. I will definitely start to consider it and may scale out some, but look, if we're at 100k by April, I'm not cashing out. <laughs> I'll be holding for higher prices. Because that will just show uh, how much of a bull market is happening. Uh, you know, you need to work out your own plan. It's more time-based for me. Uh, we'll have to see how hard this can run uh, and for how long it can run before I start to decide, you know, when I'm scaling out. But 100K wouldn't be a bad idea to take some profits around there. And I think it'll be a really hard barrier for uh, a Bitcoin to pass. I think there'll be heavy resistance there. But again, I think there'll be plenty of buying pressure there as well, depending on where we are. If that happens in the next two to three months, I think we easily go through it eventually. 
Uh, but if we're not to 100k by sort of August uh, or September, then I think you know we'll have a real hard time breaking that. Now, after watching Bitcoin plunge 50% to 3k in 24 hours in an apparently mature market last year, nothing phases me. Now, I'd feel concerned if we dropped below 18 to 16k. So again, if we go down to 24, he's not worried, and we go back to the chart. He's only worried if we come back down and touch the 200-day moving average. Now, chances are at some stage during this bull run, we will. So let's say 100K. I think we make it to 100K, I think we could easily see a 50% correction around 100K. I think there'd be plenty of people that would be happy to sell Bitcoin at 100K, including big institutions. They wouldn't sell all of it. They're probably just going to sell, you know, I don't know, whatever. 25% of it, 15% of it, whatever it may be, around that 100K mark. And particularly if they got in at 20K or 30K, they're going to, you know, 5X tripled their money by then. Even now getting in at sort of, you know, let's say 40K, they've 2.5X their money at 100K. I think 100K will be a massive psychological barrier. I think the sell-off will start before 100K. It'll be somewhere around sort of 88 to 100K. I think you're going to start to see... Uh, a hard time for Bitcoin to get through. But if that is happening at sort of, you know, let's say before June, I think we easily go to 200K uh, later in the year. But if we're at 100K by April, which again, it's not too far away in terms of dollar value and we're already sort of halfway through January, then I think, you know, the 288, the 300, $400,000 Bitcoin uh, is on the money and I wouldn't be hap I wouldn't be selling any at 100k. <laughs> I'd be waiting to scale out at a much later price. That's me. All right. So uh, it's official. Bitcoin futures platform backed. They've gone public at a 2.1 billion dollar valuation. So the Bitcoin futures platform launched in 2018 by International Exchange, which is the ICE. They also. Um, have the New York Stock Exchange, uh, has entered into a definitive agreement for business cooperation that will lead to becoming a publicly traded company with an enterprise value of over $2 billion. Uh, reports emerged last week that BAC was negotiating a strategic merger with VPC Impact Acquisitions Holdings to go public. Uh, where was it? Uh, so following the merger, the combined company will be renamed BAC Holdings Inc., and will be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So they're going to list themselves on their own stock exchange. The estimated enterprise value is approximately $2.1 billion. Look, I'm not really into stocks all that much, but this might not be a bad one. Uh, this would be something to consider. Uh, you know, again, like MicroStrategy, you know, I probably wouldn't want to jump in straight away because uh, I think, like most things, it'll pump up really high uh, and then eventually there'll be a sell-off. I'd probably want to wait for a sell-off. But in saying that, there's no guarantees. It may go a long way up before it has a retrace. So getting in straight away, um, you know, I don't know whether it's going to be a good or bad idea. I'm just saying I wouldn't be getting in straight away because I think it'll just kind of rock it up and then there'll be a big sell-off. But maybe not because that hasn't happened to MicroStrategy. They've just, their value just keeps basically going up. All right, last one but not least. Now, investment manager Guggenheim has some advice as BTC sheds billions. Now, so he said, Bitcoin's parabolic rise is unsustainable in the near term, vulnerable to a setback. The target technical upside of 35000 has been exceeded. Time to take some money off the table. Now, look, he was right. He was right. It was a time to take some money off, and particularly if you took uh, some money off, you know, over thirty-five thousand, uh, and you were able to buy back in at thirty-one thousand, where it dipped down to, uh, you know, you you made some money. But we need to be careful. So Guggenheim, uh, he where's the company that he runs here? Yeah, Guggenheim Investments Global Chief Investment Officer has some advice. Say so they have been trying to buy Bitcoin for a few months now. But back when they started, they were looking at, it was when Bitcoin was at $10,000, they went to the SEC, you know, and started the process. And they were probably thinking that, you know, we're going to be able to get into Bitcoin maybe around sort of, you know, 15, 25,000 by the time it's all confirmed and all the rest of it. 
They weren't even close. They were way over. So he has an agenda that he doesn't want Bitcoin so high. So he's telling people, oh, you know, might be a time to sell off uh, so he can buy in cheaper. But also maybe he just knows what he's talking about. It's hard to know. I think it's 50 of the one, 50 of the other. 50% he knew that it was probably a little bit oversold and there was a correction coming. But also 50% he doesn't want it to keep going up like uh, it has been because he wants to get in at a cheaper price. So uh, I found that very, very interesting. Again, he's, he's either, you know, well, to say he's not a smart man would be silly. I think he is quite smart, actually, uh, in both regards. Again, like I said, he knew it was oversold and he probably, you know, is hoping that he can put some information out there that will bring the price down. Uh, and look, sometimes... You know, one small tweak can create the biggest ruckus. And, you know, you've seen that uh, a number of times. And I'm not saying his tweet or him saying that did it. But look, sometimes that all it is, that's all it takes for people to suddenly change their mind and all the rest of it. All right. So what a day. What a day. Let's go back over here. All right. We're at 287,000. Sorry, 900, 200, 987 billion dollars. We're under the... Um, the trillion dollar mark again, what's happened in the time we've been doing this video. All right, it's going back up. Doesn't mean it can't be a dead cat bounce, but maybe that was the low. Again, Monday, the trading's all opened uh, and places around the world now, and it just seems to be going up. And again, look at these rebounds, 5.9% from Bitcoin, 53 from Ethereum. 7% for XRP, so XRP doesn't seem to be dead, you know, 10% for Cardano, you know, and so on and so on. So well done to them, and again, what are the what are the hourlies, what's really moving? Well, oh, there you can go, Verge, geez, uh, I'm kicking myself for selling Verge, but again, look, these gains uh, took too long, and I'm, I made better gains being in other ones. But as you can see, the market seems to be bouncing back, could still be a, big, uh, a dead cat bounce. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's something you want me to cover, how I'm going, what you think I can improve on, uh, and things like that. I'd love to know. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button. All right. This is me, 1MJ. Hopefully you're still on that game train. We should be, by the looks of it. And I'll see you next time.